Hi, it's Carrie Blazek, the headmistress of merrymaking at Whiskey and Whimsy, and one half of the Twisted Whiskey Sisters. Uh, this week, Hillary is in uh, Florida with her family, and I just returned from Tales of the Cocktail. Uh, down in New Orleans, which is an amazing cocktail conference, and where I got this cute shirt, uh, call me old-fashioned. So anyway, I'm flying solo today out on my balcony here on a gorgeous Chicago afternoon, and um, I wanted to talk to you about a whiskey collaboration, because obviously Hillary and I like whiskey collaborations, that's why we're called Twisted Whiskey Sister TV. But today uh, on the docket, what I want to run by you is this precious pumpkin called Four Kings. It's a collaboration between four distilleries all here in the Midwest. Actually, a few distillery right here north of Chicago and Evanston, and then three other Midwestern distilleries. Um, Coursera out of Nashville, Tennessee, and then there was um, Mississippi River Distilling in LeClaire, Iowa, and then the third one was Journeyman's Distillery over in Michigan. And what they did was they met up, of course, over drink one night here in Chicago and decided that they wanted to collaborate on a project. And each of the distilleries contributed 30 gallons of bourbon uh, from each of their recipes and then combined that and aged that in a new oak uh, barrels to produce this bad boy. So it's pretty cool, actually. What they did is um, somewhat controversial though because Corsair in Nashville actually um, did 15 gallons of their bourbon and 15 gallons of a smoked weeded whiskey. So there is some hot debate on the internet if you go check out you know, a few blogs and, and stuff about whether or not this should actually be labeled bourbon uh, because as you recall from our previous episodes in order for it to be bourbon it has to be 51% corn. Um, this one all combined is a mixture of corn, rye, wheat, and malted barley. So when you look at that definition, it still falls into the category of bourbon since the final product is over 41%, I mean 51% corn. However, since each of the products that went into the barrel uh, was not 51% corn because of that smoked weeded uh, whiskey, there is still some debate. But anyway, the end product is delicious, so let's get on to some tasting notes. Uh, the first thing that I noticed about this, which you might also be able to tell perhaps, is it's rather dark in the bottle. It looks a lot like iced tea. Does it taste like iced tea? Well, not at my house. Um, anyway, <laughs> but when you pour it into the glass, um, it's, it's slightly lighter, but definitely a little bit darker than most bourbons. And I think that this could be attributable to the fact that uh, each of the bourbons was aged in a small barrel prior to its delivery and then additional maturation when all of the bourbons were blended. So perhaps that's why you're, you know, we're experiencing the darker color. But on the nose, definitely corn, definitely that um, distinct bourbon corn nose. A little barley, to me I can smell the barley in there. Um, but not too much smoke, not too much smoke at all. And one of the things that Hillary and I don't think have talked to you about on Twisted Whiskey Sister TV is that sometimes we add a little bit of water, which opens up the bourbon. So when you think about um, like decanting red wine, especially how we talk about aerating the wine and um, letting it breathe and bringing out flavors, for whiskeys, adding water does that same thing like opens it up. So anyway, one of the things that sometimes I like to do, well, usually I like to taste it first. <laughs> Big surprise there, huh? Mm. Very tasty, tasty indeed. Um, but one of the things that we do sometimes is just add just a little bit of water and see if that changes it. So what I notice off the, um, from the first sip that I tasted is definitely the corn, the sweetness, a little bit of the wheat at the very beginning. Um, then it kind of opens up into this really spicy rye. I get the rye punch, as I like to call it, um, right after that sweetness. And then not a terribly long finish, but I definitely get the smoke more towards the end um, of, the, of the flavor profile, if you will. But one of the ways to add water is to just take a straw, not not a whole lot of water. It's kind of like just do a little uh, pipette, a small science experiment. So just put your straw in the water and then put your finger over it, um, preferably good quality water, and then just add 
oh, a drop or two to your glass. And then see how that changes it. It's kind of a fun experiment. Like Hillary talk and I talk a lot about um, tasting whiskey side by side to see what you notice between the differences um, when you're comparing one to the other. But when you only have one glass, um, it's nice to add a little water and see if you notice anything different. The nose, I get a lot more of the barley on the nose when I add the water. The, the corn uh, sweetness actually kind of fades. On the palate, much, um, much smoother. It's really um, silky and sweet. It t totally tames down that ryeness. And um, I notice a little bit more of the smoke coming to the front of my palate. So if you want to experiment with your whiskey, as we like to do over here at Twisted Whiskey Sisters TV, that's another thing that you can try. So like I said, today uh, was the whiskey collaboration, Four Kings. Uh, which I think is kind of a cute name. I don't know how they came up with that part. Um, but once again, a whiskey collaboration, just like the Twisted Whiskey Sisters TV. So if you can get your hands on this bad boy, I definitely suggest you try it out. It's available at Benny's, uh, B-I-N-N-Y-S here in Chicago. Uh, you may be able to find it online, I'm not sure. Or if you're really devilish and need to have a bottle, I've got one uh, in my archives. <laughs> so hit me up if you're interested. Otherwise, have a great week and we will see you back here next week on Twisted Whiskey Sister TV. Cheers, y'all.